Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here with another video. Woke up this morning. Epic 7 has a bunch of meted in mail, which, as you know, traditionally means something good. Although, I guess the last one with Awakened Potential, not so much. Had a video already planned for today, but I guess we're going to have to shelve that because we got to watch this and figure out uh, what the heck is going on. I've heard a couple of things from other content creators and some friends about what's actually in it. So I kind of know some things, but I haven't actually sat down and watched all of the videos. So let's just go through them and figure out what the heck is going on. So this one, this one is about dynamic pets, apparently. So let's see. So I think this is what people were talking about. So you have the ability now to just change pet appearance, which I, I guess is uh, fine, right? Like, honestly, pets continue to be one of the worst decisions I feel like the game has ever had. Pet snacks era, not particularly great. And even now, like, they're kind of annoying. Yes, I'm thankful that I have a cosmetic pet, like, following me around, uh, you know, in battle. Or I have one in my lobby that gives me free stuff. That's cool and all, but the process of raising them, getting the right skills, rolling for them, that stuff is all just, uh, oh, look, they got our, our, our man, uh, what is it, uh, Bearlock Holmes uh, as one of them. <laughs> but yeah, there's the whole the whole thing involving pets. Uh, I just never have felt it's been like a super amazing uh, system. <laughs> They're actually melting. That's pretty funny. I didn't know that they could do that. All right, so you can change the pet appearances, and so apparently we got another thing here with uh, with uh, Garo. So we have the Korean version of Garo. I'm used to uh, the boy Greg Chun being the English Garo, who just obviously uh, is in Yakuza Infinite Wealth, if you're playing through that right now. It just came out uh, today. Yeah, oh, okay, so we can collect all the rewards at once and no longer have to just go one by one by one. Okay, that's a pretty big change. Uh, and you could, uh, oh, wow. Oh, man, this is actually a pretty huge change, right? So you could send out all five of your expos that you have at a time and you could just choose guild or friends, like invitation range. Like, this should have been in expeditions from the start. Like, we've had the system for what, like two years, two and a half years now? And this wasn't in from the start. Like, this is honestly one of the actual, like, worst things for Expeditions. It's just, it's so annoying to actually have to go one by one. Uh, click the thing. Set the difficulty. Choose what I want to invite. Hit the invite in. Click the OK button. I'm sure that this is probably not news to some of you, but uh, this game has a lot of UI bloat. And honestly, it's one of the big things I think that they should work on fixing. Like that, it just takes too many button presses to get things done in this game. And I really think they should streamline it, even with the unit engine and their lack of load times. It's kind of rough from uh, time to time. So I think this is pretty much it, right? There's nothing else going on here. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's it for that video. So now let's move on to draft arena. Which, uh, if this is what I think it is, like why? Was this not before the content creator battle? Like, I could have used uh, the ability to get a mulligan uh, when I was playing Prof Boy last weekend. So we have Ventus. Yeah, draft mode is pretty good. I won't lie. Alright, so let's see. What do we got here? Confident enough to take on anyone. Uh, RNG says otherwise, Meridian. Alright. What's the news? Are we getting a draft queue? Yo, are we actually getting a draft queue? <laughs> All right, that's actually, all right, that's kind of sick. All right, I'm just making sure this is a draft clear, right? You should enjoy battles, yeah. And now directly access through the arena screen. All right, let's go, okay. 
Wait, why is it only available for certain times? That... Is that like a server issue, Smogate? Like, can you just not have the game running full time? So, like, you just choose it during non, like, peak hours? Like... That's kind of weird. So, like... Like, the time here, right? Like, 0200 to 40... Like, that's three hours, right? That's, like... 9 p.m. to midnight, my time. Right? Like, that's that's so awkward. And then you have nine hours after that. It's, like, 6 in the morning until, like, 8 a.m. And then one's the last one here. Another, it's going to end up being seven hours after that. So, like, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Like, these times are, like, so awkward for somebody like me on, on East Coast time. Ah, uh, dude, I don't, I really don't like that that is divided up in those kinds of things. Those must be like non-peak hours, like hours when nobody's actually playing. Oh, note to self, that's probably the time I should stream <laughs> if I'm available. Oh, I like that it's like at rank 40, right? So you could start playing draft mode arena long before you can access world arena. That's a huge deal if you're somebody who's newer and wants to eventually play world arena, but you're scared because you don't have the gear uh, or, or whatnot. That's a really big deal. I would like it to see a, a ranked queue for draft mode. I think it would make it so much easier for players to be able to get the master to get the skins. So it's a mulligan. Okay, that's good. Wait, that's actually, that's actually massive. So... Alright, go back here. It has never been options for both players before. So that, that has potential implications for metagaming, right? So if you don't have like uh, strong picks, it might be worth it to mulligan just to get three new ones that you know your opponent doesn't like actually have. So like if they've already chosen and you haven't, and it's like the only thing I could be worried about in their fifth pick is like, I don't know, let's say for argument's sake, Nikwal, right? You could shuffle and if you see Nikwal, then you know their last pick isn't it. So you could pick from the other two. Uh, more liberally it's very minor but like these are little things that i like paying attention to um especially uh in like card games when you draft like picking up on little signals like that is really really important and it's the difference between victory and defeat a lot of times yeah um i i why couldn't this have been before ccb like i really 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 wanted this oh it's so frustrating Grasp the part. Is there anything else? Is there certain heroes will appear with distinct settings for their stats. So this is the one that we currently have a job What's the difference? So this one has more attack. That bulk is not it. That speed is not it. Oh, it's a DPS solitaria. Wait, it's on injury? Okay, that I'll, mm, I'll be really, I don't know a single person who plays solitary like this. They play it either like this, right? Or they play like way faster than this with Abyssal, which is how I play it, right? Like I play faster than 250. I play like around like 270 on Abyssal with high effectiveness, like 200 effectiveness, right? Uh, and I have not as much bulk as this, but I still have more bulk than this, so... I don't know anyone who plays Injury Solitaire this though. Like, yes, she's a great injury character when combined with Death Dealer Ray, but I don't think I would ever consider playing Injury on that. The thing that sucks about this is that when you choose characters in this game, if you have it set to stats here in the lower left-hand corner, you get to see the stats and the sets. So I think that the best draft mode players will just look real quick when you select the character to see what set it's on to know the loadout of the character because you can't really mind game with this. Like, I think it would be really cool if they showed me only the character and not the stats. 
I think that would be super helpful. Um, it would actually, it would kind of gatekeep a little bit. Like I think, mm, that's, that's rough. So the thing is, if you hide the stats, then it is harder for your opponent to tell which version of a character you took. Like, did I take the injury solitary or did I take the, the effect resistance fairy tale for a nightmare version of solitary? And like those might influence your draft because obviously you don't want to draft bruisers if it's injury. So if you pick it and I just look and see the injury set, then I'm not going to draft the bruisers. Like, so the, the mystery, the counterplay that's gone unless you hide specific data from me. But at the same time, like, uh, then I don't know the speeds of the characters and that's kind of rough. Cause then I have to memorize all the different speed thresholds. If I want to play draft mode, I mean, that's not that it's different than actual like ladder itself. But, um, for example, like when I was prepping for the content creator battle, I yeah. knew, well, Pera is the fastest unit in the actual thing. So if I need a fast character, choose Pera because she's the one at 306. And then Rand's at 305. And then Ace is at 304. And then after that, you have Rin at 302, right? So those are the, the breakpoints. Those are the fastest characters. And then it goes Lua, and then Conquer, and then Nequal in terms of speed thresholds for the openers. All right, so that's it for Draft Arena. Let's move on to the next thing. And this one... Uh, I started to skim through this one already to see if there was anything like crazy about it because it looks like it's a uh, announcing the Valentine side story and uh, some of the characters like a friend of mine let me know like a uh, Tamarin is uh, something that's gonna be in the next video we're gonna look at along with some new character right so I don't want to spend too much time here on this you can see it's basically from what I, I grasped when I looked through it earlier that the Valentine side story is about Maid Chloe and Rima making a band <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. You keep rationalizing. Gotta rationalize it. Yeah. So here's our new character. Unveil new songs written by All right, so here's the thing. So th this is what they have. So it's Maid Chloe on the left, Rima on the right. The t this is the Tamarin, I believe, that uh, we'll, we'll see in the next video. And then our new the newest member, which is the bass member. Why is it always the bass member of the band? Is like the, the cool one, the one that shows up fashionably late. So I guess that's pretty cool. Um. Yeah. What I want out of this is an actual new music. Like it says it's new music written by our members. Like I expect if you say that tracks, please like good ones too. Cause promise, which is the Tamarin song from episode one and episode two, that's a banger. That's probably best song all time from Epic seven. Like I think uh, we could all agree. That song is just fire. Uh, obviously voyage to victory, same artist, pretty good. Uh, lyrics kind of, you know, not quite there. They don't really make sense. Like to a native English speaker, they're kind of rough. Like there's better ways they could have been done, but obviously round Lee is just amazing. So if you're going to bring back round Lee for like another track with, uh, as Tamarin, like I'm here for that. Like just whatever it is, like give me a couple of music tracks. I hope they are really, really good. So that's, I think the most exciting thing to come out of this. Let me see. So, Valentine's Day 21st special side story, Miracle Made Kingdom, scheduled for delivery in February. Did they say anything about the music? No. She did it. She said the thing. Guys, she said the thing. VIP treatment. That's her, her S3. She said the thing. All right. Now let's move on to the one that I've been waiting for. This is probably the one that you probably all have been waiting for as well. And this is uh, our thoughts on the new characters. Again, I've seen some of these like, you know, whizzing through my own Discord and, you know, DMs. And obviously I talked to a friend of mine on the phone about some of this stuff that was shown. But uh, yeah, let's just jump into it and see what we are dealing with. So this is Miracle Made Kingdom stage, should we? All right. Um, I didn't know I needed blonde tamarind. Like I, I have a, a soft spot for the whole red, white, and blonde haired thing. Um, in case you guys don't know, uh, 
<laughs> so, yeah. Um, all right, I'm in. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm in. Uh, I was, uh, that, this is not, that was not planned, by the way. Like, I actually do keep a, a, uh, a figure of Nero Claudius to the side of my desk. It's, uh, a gift from a friend of mine. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, wow. Um, she looks really, really good. Let me hear this voice line again. Welcome stage. Should we start the show? I'm like... Okay, hold on. Yeah, the new member of Miracle Maid Oh, is this the basis? All right, hold on. Let me, let me rewind that again. Start the show. I'm Lina. Is that Christina V? This again? I can't take it anymore! All right, that is absolutely Christina V. Okay, I'm oh, I'm sorry, I'm stoked. Okay, all right. So this is hilarious because in case you guys don't know, Christina V is if if I'm right, if I'm wrong, this is gonna age like sour milk. But Christina V is Mio from Kaon, who is the band's bassist. They actually got the generic anime girl bassist voice to be the 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 girl bassist. Miracle Maid Kingdom. It's showtime. I'll do my best. Right here. This again. I can't take it anymore. That's uh, that has to be her. Oh hello, Whomst? Wait, she's got like the fancy. The fancy binoculars, like the you hold onto your face, whomst? Um, I like the hair, and I like the actual like whatever this like coat dress thing is. But I'm not like big on the rest of this design. I think I think this the rest of this design is just like it's okay. Like I, I think Elvira is a lot cooler. I'm assuming based on the fact that she's like is she a shadow elf? Based on the ears, is she a vampire? How's this, you arrogant punk? It's just yo. Okay. Now, now that I'm all so Genoa, right? Let's do this for real. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now that I'm all warmed up, let's do this for oh, real. Oh, he's got the he's got the, the the cool guy. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I heard that they were getting a new Sid. Yeah, this is this is definitely a Sid. Like. Yeah, okay, this has got to be a Sid, right? So, like, he's got the ears, right? He's got the the two... So the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the two knives here, right? There's no way that's not a Sid. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Hold on, let me go back to that. Like, what? My guy is just, like... Uh, is he, like, a writer? Is he, like, a, some kind of adventurer? All right, I bet you... I bet you anything, by the way, that this, uh, this Sid or whatever... I bet you anything that he's from the same world as like Navy Captain Landy, Spirit Eyes Celine, Moon Bunny Dominion. Like this just looks like I mean you can tell just looking at the an Esther animation that he's from the the Voyager of the Sea or whatever world. That's cool. Would you care to share a dance with me? We can waltz until the black oceans dry up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this, I think this is, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Politus. I think this is ML Politus. Like, it sounds like when she does the, let me listen to it again. Would you care to share a dance with me? We can waltz until the black oceans. Yeah, that sounds like her voice line from Starfall. Like, I'm pretty confident this is, this is Politus. Dry the, the dolls kind of give it away, the ghost dolls. But yeah, this is, like, this has to be ML Politus. Like, and honestly... This design, kind of nice, kind of clean. It's not my favorite, but I like the colors. Like, I'm a big fan of this color, like, this uh, color of black with this color of blue. Like, I'm a pretty big fan of it. I'm pretty sure I've used it on my, some of my thumbnails for, like, text. I think it's just a nice contrast, this blue, with this, like, you know, lighter shade of black. It's, like, kind of got a little bit of blue mixed into it. I've always been a big fan of this uh, contrasting color palette. Like, it's a good color palette. Do I think that it could have been a little bit of a better design? Yeah, maybe because it does look like it's just a palette swap of her base design, right? But to be fair, I don't think we we're ever going to really outdo Politus's base design because, like, that design is actually one of the better ones. Like, a lot of the Episode 3 designs are just, like, next level, like, out of this world. Some of the best ones we have in the whole game. Um, So, yeah. Again, pretty pretty hype about Politus. More than 10 girls have already been sacrificed as brides. 
That dragon king sure is a terribly greedy dragon. All right, hold on. Go back to this. All right. So, is this Senya, right? Like, I had heard that this is, like, potentially Senya. It's so weird, because straight up, like, this looks like Doris, doesn't it? Like, a little bit with the colored hair. I mean, like, she's uh, a little bit uh, chestier than, than Doris. But uh, I feel like the Lance gives it away. All right, let me listen to the line again. More than 10 girls have already been sacrificed as brides. That Dragon King sure is a terribly greedy dragon. So when she says Dragon King, is that Mort? Are we talking about Mort? Like, is that, that kind of, is that, that what this is? Like, is this, is, I think this is ML Senya, And I straight up think that, uh, yeah, is this like her being betrothed? Wait, hold on. She has like, she has like a chain on her wrist, right? Like, did more in this timeline instead of uh, more kidnapping Senya to give the dragon to fight her? Did in this timeline did he kidnap Senya to like force her to be his bride? Like, she's kind of like basically like a prisoner in like a marriage that she doesn't want to have. And then you have obviously the spear here. Now I think this is Senya, and in which case, if this is Senya. I'm saving my bookmarks. I'm getting Sanya. Y'all y'all know how much I love Sanya. Sanya is definitely like one of my favorite characters to play in Epic 7. Uh, I'm really proud of the how to play Sanya video that I did about two years ago. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty hyped about this. I would rather have this character over the Polidus, like for sure. Uh, Alpha's a little bit, uh, it's a bit much. It's not the worst thing we've ever seen, but like, it, it's it honestly it's kind of just like lingerie <laughs> like let's be real here with like a veil I know. okay yeah so this is the actual say okay so we go right into saying is this like a whole Sanya block we go ml Sanya and then like Sanya skin so this i believe is marguerite's skin for winning uh e7wc we've kind of known about this because of leaks and things but i don't typically cover leaks here on the channel because well leaks can be somewhat harmful to marketing and the game uh, on the whole, so... I knew it! Technique is more important than strength. Okay, yeah, so... <sighs> it's you, Senya. Forget about all of that. And focus uh, on really your did. happiness and health. So we actually... Sleep tight, my child. So we actually are getting, um... We actually are getting, uh... The, the little girl Senya as a character, anyway. I see. Uh, important to note, I, I guess, like, not really important, but just something that you may have noticed, but um, I believe that they recast Alencia's voice actress uh, with the same one that is now currently Shoes, because if you can hear, this is very clearly Alencia, but it's not the same voice of Alencia that is currently in E7. <sighs> it's you, Senya. Forget about all of that and focus on your happiness and health. Sleep tight, my child. Okay. All right, so I, I'm pretty hype about this, this, like, set of updates. Like, as a Senya enjoyer, we are, uh, we're eating good. Uh, obviously, we have this. Like, I think this is the thing I'm the most excited for. Like, if this is actually a Senya, like... Dragon King sure is a terribly greedy dragon. All right, so I, I'm most excited, I think, for this. And then after that, uh, it's the Tamarind, because, like... <sighs> All right. Uh, the question is, is this a skin, though? Because the, normally, the the skins don't have voice lines unless they're RTA skins. This is Miracle Maid Kingdom stage! Should we start the show? So is this, like, a limited? Is this, like, a limited Tamarin? That's what I'm I'm starting to wonder. Is this limited? Whatever this is, I need this, right? I, I have to have this. Um, if it is a new limited character, or, like, maybe it's ML Tamarin... Uh, I don't think it'll ever be as good as uh, base Tamarind because that character is broken. Also, I still think if this is Christy V, this is still really, really funny to me that they got uh, Mio from k to voice basically Mio from k <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, those are uh, those are everything that we got today. Uh, which characters uh, or features are you most excited for? Let me know down in the comments below. And... If you're watching this on the day it airs, tonight is the return of the content creator battle. Feel free to drop by my Twitch at uh, around 10 p.m. EST. 
7 p.m. PST. We'll do a watch along. I'll do some commentary on the games. Feel free to ask me any questions. Love to see you there. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.